Welcome to Anglicare Church to you as we continue our series of church services on Luke's Gospel. I'm Grant Millard, I'm Anglicare's Chief Executive Officer and it's great to be with you. Our service today is led by Paul James and our sermon is by Josh Thomas, both of whom are Anglicare chaplains. Our Bible reading is from Luke's Gospel chapter 19. It's the account of Zacchaeus, the short tax collector whose life changed when he met Jesus. Zacchaeus is another of the people that Luke focuses on who were lost but then were found when they met Jesus. And that's not so different to you and I, to each of us. Everyone Jesus rescues can apply to themselves those famous words. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost but now am found, was blind but now I see. That was Zacchaeus, and that's each of us who have come to trust in Jesus. We hope you enjoy today's service. Welcome to our service today, friends. We're very glad that you've come to join us. If you have access to our Anglicare service cards, there's an order of service to be found on the green and white cards. Today we're going to be hearing from God's Word as we read the Bible together. And we're going to be praying to our great God. We'll be singing praises to God and we will confess our sins to Him. And we will remember the forgiveness of sins and the hope of eternal life that is found in Jesus' death and resurrection for us. And we will start our time of praise, proclamation and prayer with our first hymn. Around the throne, we're marching to Zion. the people of God but the scripture reminds us that we still sin we need to confess our failures knowing that God freely forgives us through Jesus Christ our Lord and so I invite you please pray this prayer with me almighty and most merciful father we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep 
we have left undone what we ought to have done, and we have done what we ought not to have done. We have followed our own ways and the desires of our own hearts. We have broken your holy laws. Yet, good Lord, have mercy on us. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared to mankind in Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a godly and obedient life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who with hearty repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to hear from God's Word, the Bible. Our Bible reading today comes from The Essential Jesus, Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. There was a man there named Zacchaeus, a senior tax collector who was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but he was unable to because he was a small man and the crowd got in the way. He ran ahead of the crowd and climbed up a fig tree to see him because Jesus was about to pass by that way. When Jesus got to that place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, climb down now because I have to stay in your home today. He climbed down quickly and welcomed Jesus gladly into his home. When everyone saw this, they complained, He has gone to stay with a man who is a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, half of my belongings, Lord, I will give away to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I will repay them four times the amount. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this home, for this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and save what was lost. Please join with me now as we encourage one another with the great truths of what we believe in the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. Let's stand together.
seated. It's now time for our sermon. Thank you for joining us today. For a time when I was young, I used to keep silkworms. I'd keep them in a little box, and each morning and afternoon I would feed them mulberry leaves that I had picked through the day that had hung over Mrs. McInerney's fence around the corner. And day after day I would watch them crawling around and eating, crawling and eating, crawling and eating. But after a number of days, they would do this amazing thing. They would start creating, weaving a fine threaded cocoon. And once they had finished it, they would enter into that cocoon and they would disappear into it for a few days. They seemed so long when I was a child. But after those precious few days, that little ugly little silkworm that entered re-emerged as a totally new creature, a moth that didn't just crawl around and eat and spend its day doing menial things. No, it flew. It flew to all corners of the box. Similarly, an encounter with Jesus can also become a life-changing event. And we have such an example in the passage that has just been read about a man named Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus is described by Luke as a senior tax collector. He was in charge of a group of Jews who were despised by their own people because they had had cheated them out of much of their own money in order to pay taxes to the Roman authorities, but also as well for their own profit. They would charge a certain percentage in tax, but have a little bit of extra for themselves. And Zacchaeus was in charge of this group of people. And so we notice that while Zacchaeus is very wealthy and even possibly successful by the world's standards, we find that he knows that there is something missing in his life. Even people today, if they're honest, will eventually admit that there's more to life than just trying to make money or gain possessions. Zacchaeus is so desperate to see who this Jesus was. This small man, small in stature, but also small in integrity, runs ahead of the crowd and climbs a tree to see Jesus. Astonishingly, Jesus approaches him. And Jesus finds this despised and unscrupulous man. And he calls Zacchaeus down from the tree. Zacchaeus, climb down now. I have to stay in your home today. Zacchaeus doesn't waste any time getting out of that tree. In fact, the passage that we've just read tells us, so he climbed down quickly and welcomed Jesus gladly into his home. Quite surprising for someone who was such a a self-made man to welcome this renowned teacher into his presence so gladly. Now a meal is shared and a conversation it has started with Jesus and we see that Zacchaeus is greatly impacted by the call on his life. Because of what he is about to say, I think we can safely conclude that Zacchaeus was converted during that meal. He knew he was a sinner. 
and had come to the Saviour for salvation. His conversion is clear because of the life change we see. You see, Zacchaeus pushes himself away from the table and he says to Jesus, Look, half of my belongings, Lord, I'm going to give away to the poor. And if I've cheated anyone out of anything, and you can imagine the crowd in the room are all chuckling because, of course, he's cheated everyone. If I've cheated anyone out of anything, I will repay them four times the amount I have cheated them. As part of his repentance, Zacchaeus wants to right his wrongs. An incredible change of heart leads him to make it right with those he had hurt, those he had cheated. He's now an incredibly different man. So he declares that he's going to give half of his possessions to the poor and make repayments of four times the amount to those he has swindled. In fact, what he has promised is far more than what is required by law. But his commitment to a new life meant freedom from what he treasured most, his wealth. Jesus sums up this incredible life-changing event that everyone is witnessing in this man. Today, salvation has come to this home. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save what was lost. Zacchaeus was that typical person. And perhaps today, you are that person. That person who needs to be sought after. Jesus is seeking after you. Jesus is still on a search and save mission. He is seeking out people who need to be saved. Today, you may be one of them. In a way, you might be like one of those little silkworms I used to have when I was a child who spent their time living a life that you thought was going to bring you happiness. But you realize that there's still something missing. Something missing in your life. Just as Jesus called Zacchaeus, Jesus calls you. He knows everything about you. He knows and has been pursuing you and a relationship with you for a long, long time. He knows your pain, He knows your dreams. He knows all the details of your life. He knows your failures. He knows your sins. And yet he still loves you. He wants to dine with you. He wants to be an intimate part of your life. He's seen the tragedies of your life. He has seen where you have fallen short. And he's been trying to get your attention. Right now, he may be speaking to your heart. Just as he called out to Zacchaeus, so too he is calling out to you. Come to me right now, says Jesus. I must come into your life. Let me pray for us. We thank you, Jesus, that you do love us just the way we are. And we realize that we may be just like those silkworms. We have something that is missing, a freedom. And perhaps there is loneliness, perhaps there is confusion, perhaps there's anxiety or pain of some kind in our lives. Free us from those things, Lord. We respond to you and we ask that you do come into our lives. Forgive us for what we have done wrong in your eyes. Help us to make right those things that we have done wrong. But more importantly, 
Help our lives to be changed by your life-giving spirit. We thank you that you never give up. And we thank you for your precious word that gives us life. Again, in your precious name we pray. Amen. May God bless your day. We're now going to sing a hymn together. Our next hymn is May the Mind of Christ My Saviour. We're now going to pray together the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We are now going to come to a time of prayer when we'll pray for ourselves, we'll pray for our community and for our world. So please join with me as we pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. 
Give us grace that we may always thankfully receive the benefits of his sacrifice and also daily endeavour to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, you know that we live in the midst of many dangers and temptations and that because we are weak and frail, we cannot always stand firm. Grant us strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Faithful God, you caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them, that by patience and the comfort of your holy word, that we may embrace and always hold firmly to the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord God, look with mercy on all for whom increasing years bring isolation and distress. Give them understanding helpers and the willingness to receive what is offered. As their strength diminishes, increase their faith and their assurance of your love. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's conclude our time of prayer together with the prayer of thanksgiving. Together. Most merciful Father, we humbly thank you for all your gifts so freely bestowed on us, for life and health and safety, for power to work and leisure to rest, and for all that is beautiful in creation and in the lives of men. We praise and glorify your holy name. But above all, we thank you for your spiritual mercies in Christ Jesus our Lord, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to sing a hymn together. Our next hymn, O oh God, our help in ages past. <laughs> let's bring our time together to a close in the words of the greats the grace, grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all evermore amen god bless you friends Hi, my name's Andrew Ford, General Manager for Mission Partnerships at Anglicare. God tells us in the Bible not to give up meeting together, but to encourage one another until the day when Jesus returns. We need each other. We need to encourage each other to trust Jesus and to live for him.
That's one reason why we have church services and chapel each week in each of our homes. And we have a chaplain and pastoral carers. Meeting face to face, whether one on one or in groups, is important. And I want to encourage you to continue to meet and encourage one another. But you and I know there are sometimes good reasons why we cannot meet face to face. It might be sickness or immobility or other reasons that make, it, make us unable to gather together. And for these times, your chaplains have made available some televised services. We call it Anglicare Church to You. We hope and pray that this will encourage you with God's word and with prayer. These short televised programs don't replace our weekly face-to-face -face meetings. They are meant to be an additional resource of encouragement at times when we want to but we cannot meet together for church. Of course, your chaplain is also available at these times of restricted access. If you need them, don't hesitate to contact them or ask. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.